Hello dear students, this is Dr. Tushar Nayaran as part of the board master's program. I am here to discuss the second paper in series which has already been made available to you on the LN website with a pop-up there. You can uh, access that page, uh, that paper. So here just one day to go. Uh, I hope the Josh is high. How is the Josh? Really high, isn't it? Not or if not, there is uh, if you have some, you know, problems, issues, if you think that not yet high. So I'll show you that how you can keep your Josh high because I'm going to discuss just some important portions uh, from your paper which has been made available. How to attempt the questions. Uh, I've selected some important portions only. I won't discuss the whole paper. So just the portions where you think that you would require a discussion you would like to know. So let's see this question from the first passage outside the classroom but reinforce or supplement classroom curriculum. So pick the option in which the meaning of supplement is not the same as it is in the passage. So what we have to do is we have to find out what that the correct usage of this word supplement. The handout provided by the teacher supplements the official manual. So here we are using supplement as a verb. Again in the second one we can use our resources of time and money to supplement their limited amounts. Again as a verb you might, might consider taking a vitamin supplement. Here it is a noun and the last one to supplement his income again as a verb. So this one is the correct one because here's use of supplement uh, is being made as a noun, right? So you need to identify in this manner. There can be some other manners as well like uh, use uh, thinking of the collocation that whether the association is proper or not. Now let's come to the next one. Choose the option that best captures the central idea of the passage from the given quotes. So you can easily see the given answer is this one, third one, uh, right? Now, why can't it be first or fourth or any other? Second cannot be like learn, unlearn and relearn. So the passage doesn't speak of learning or unlearning or relearning. There is no such detail or no uh, such you know, facts to corroborate or support this statement. So this can be directly ruled out. Now, of one, learning is creation, not consumption. So uh, again, the passage doesn't talk of uh, creating or consuming. Knowledge is not something a learner absorbs, but something a learner creates. So it is directly talking of what create and, uh, creation and consumption, uh, something that one absorbs, it is not actually uh, knowledge. So here again, this is not just about knowledge as well. It is about the academics education. So this can also be avoided. And then fourth one, education is a natural process carried out by the child and is not acquired by listening to words, but by experiences in the environment. So this means that only, uh, you know, the experiences in the environment, one can be educated or that is the best way. But the passage includes both the things. So here learning of the highest value extends well beyond measurable dimensions. Means it is not just up to measurable dimensions, grades and such things as given in the passage. It, is, it goes beyond that. It can't be fit into any curriculum or evaluated by any test. Means the school uh, processes say that, okay, uh, through tests and through examinations, they test your knowledge, they evaluate you through a certain curriculum, um, you know, which uh, the child is confined in that. But the text, the passage says, no, it goes beyond that. And that is what the statement is also saying. It is activated by experiences which develop our humanity. It teaches us to be our best selves. So means it, we can say this comprises the gist of the passage. All the things incorporated or conveyed in the passage have been uh, taken here. So C is the best option that way. Now, the narrator says that for gaining practical experience is always considered a hoax. Hoax means a sham. What I mean is this one. S-H-A-M. 
not S H A M E. That is shame. So this is different. This is sham. Sham means uh, I would say something. Uh, uh, a pretension means something that can deceive somebody. Uh, you know. So that is hoax. So there would have been a problem had it been the opposite. Not being considered a hoax means what truth. Of course, we cannot take joke as the correct uh, opposite. Uh, prank also. Prank is mischief, trick, you know. So the correct word here is uh, the opposite of hoax can be truth or true. Now the word uh, true is not given, uh, right is not given or something uh, which uh, there can be other words as well. So the closest one out of the four given is truth. So this can be chosen as the answer. Now pick the option showing the incorrect use of the word intellectual. So here um, this is the correct answer. It says she likes to read because it says incorrect use. So here we can say uh, this is possible. She likes to read detective and comedy novels. Nothing too intellectual about that. Okay, fine. C says his approach to acting. So his approach is either immature or intellectual means the sentences. His approach to acting is immature rather than intellectual. So this is these two words are about approach which can be immature which can be intellectual. Fine. His family members were very intellectual and witty is also fine. Intellectual expansion is uh, not the proper collocation. So we can avoid this. Okay. And means this is the incorrect one we can say. Now let's come to section B. So if you have practiced uh, some of the comprehensions, some of the passages, you may find that perhaps you are taking more time. By this time, I think you might have practiced enough. If you haven't, you must because otherwise you will have, of course, some problem in reading part as well. Some of the answers may be confused. Some of the options may be confusing. You may take more time. So avoid all such problems during exam. You should at least try two, three uh, different varieties of passages. That is advisable. Let's come to the section B. You are Ravi or Rachna as the president of the cultural forum of your school. You have organized an inter-school orchestra competition on the occasion of Silver Jubilee celebrations of your school. So Silver Jubilee celebrations are there and competition is inter-school orchestra competition and a notice is to be drafted. So Tagore Memorial School, Patna. Okay, notice, underlining uh, notice would be proper. Date in this format, a comma should be, means these are the mistakes that the students commit. So just for, uh, to remind you all that I've done this, so uh, underline this word, put a comma here, uh, write date in this format, then the title. So we are using capital letters, that is advisable, or at least the first letter should be capital. On the occasion of the Silver Jubilee celebrations, an inter-school orchestra competition will be held. The details are as follows. So we have incorporated all the details. You can see what date, time, venue, participants, maximum nine in an item. So we have specified all the details. Last date for submission of entry forms is 10th November. And we can also include what don't miss out on this opportunity. Uh, something like that can be added at the end. Then you have to uh, do the signatures here, then the name, then the post, okay, uh, cultural forum or uh, president dash cultural forum that can be done. So this should be the way, right? And this is the proper way. You should remember this if you are committing any mistake. So this is um, the point where you should uh, or like you can compare it with the given one and that's why we are discussing so that if you have any confusions that can be avoided at the last moment. Now second one, Dr. V. R. Trivedi, a renowned scientist wishes to visit your school to deliver a talk on nuclear energy in India. Draft a short notice for the science section for class 11th and 12th of your school. You are Prakash Ahuja, activity in charge. So KD Vidyale Noida. Then the word notice, 
which I have already underlined here. I have put a comma here as well. Talk on Nuclear Energy India. So that is what we are doing, means the title. So it should always be short and catchy. You must remember, uh, it shouldn't look like a complete sentence or so. All the students of class 11th and 12th science section are requested to attend the talk by a renowned scientist. The details are as follows. Now we have included the details here, the date, time, venue, speaker, Prakash Ahuja. Again, you can mention a line here that uh, it will really be, it's going to be quite an enlightening session. So uh, students are advised not to miss out on this opportunity of being, uh, you know, of, uh, of course, like uh, being blessed that we are blessed to have such a renowned scientist here. So something of that kind should be in, uh, included in the notice uh, at the end that don't miss out on this opportunity or don't miss out on this opportunity to be enlightened by uh, the you know, informative and inspiring words of Mr. V. R. Trivedi or the great scientist. So something like that we can include at the end. So that would only add to uh, your to the beauty of your notice and definitely help you fetch more marks means full out of full signature, name and uh, the designation activity in charge, right? Now, Sunrise Global School Agra is going to organize a one act play, a competition in the school auditorium and draft a formal invitation for other school, you are Karuna Karan Cultural Secretary. And you have already given what that uh, Nalini is going to grace the occasion. So Sunrise Global School Agra seeks your gracious presence on the annual one act play competition, Eklavya, we have just given a name. Date, time, venue is given, chief guest, uh, because this, um, this is for other school. You can see, now if you invite Mrs. Nalini, then that will be wrong because some student without reading the question properly, this, this may happen that you don't read the question properly. What do you think that Mrs. Nalini is going to be invited and you invite her. So you will lose all your marks. So this is an important point, right? You must remember, read the question properly, whatever is given and then start writing. Don't half reading will definitely lead you uh, to lose your marks. So you must understand this. So right in this way, we present noted theater artists and then RSVP, Karuna Koshi, cultural secretary. Guests are requested to be seated by 3.30 p.m. This is what we can say. Okay, so in this way, we can inform the rest of the schools. Now you are Swati or Sumit, you have been invited by Rotary Club to act as one of the judges for a debate competition for the students of class 11th and 12th, but due to a previous engagement, you are unable to accept the invitation. So what we have to write, Sumit thanks the president of uh, the Rotary Club. Now, what this way you can start, but now the better way is what Mr. Sumit thanks the president. You can even, uh, you know, centralize this and write here, Mr. Sumit. And then flush left to flush right. This can also be done uh, the best way. So thanks the president. So the, these mistakes, we find such kind of things in the answer sheets. That's why I'm pointing out the things to you so that you don't commit any of these mistakes, right? Uh, for the debate competition, so you can see that I have highlighted this just by capitalizing it, the place as well, and the occasion, that debate competition. So this is the way to highlight and you can also use the same thing, just uh, using capital letters. That is the only way we have. We can't, you know, uh, use different colors or, uh, you know, any drawing or designing that is not allowed. However, he expresses deep regret for his inability to accept the invitation due to some prior engagement, which is already given in the question. He sends his best wishes for the event. So uh, we have one, added one more line here he, that he sends his best wishes. And then here we don't require any full stop. So you can also, because these are the things we have found in the answer sheets of the students. So it's a kind of precautionary, uh, you know, information to you that you don't commit any of these mistakes. You can lose your marks. 
Then there is a flood of advertisements on TV channels these days, useless commodities and even superstitions. Beliefs are being promoted through the glamorous and exaggerated presentation. Write a letter to the editor. So a general one that uh, TV ads are actually um, promoting what superstitions, such kind of uh, superstitious beliefs as well, exaggerated presentations are there. So what we have to do? about the negative influence such advertisements have on the minds of the people. So you have to write a letter, you are Radha or Ramesh. So some clues are given, so you can use these cues or clues, right? Now, uh, this is the way you should write, means the address. Now we are not using any punctuation, just to separate these two things, I put a comma here. Then uh, here a comma. After this, you can leave a line, then this receiver's address, right? And then, uh, sir and subject. Now, this subject can be above sir as well. That too is possible. Negative effects of TV advertisements. This is the subject. And this is to express my concern over the quality of advertisements. So, I've uh, given just the starting here. You can also uh, say what the usual beginning through the columns of your esteemed national daily, if it is a national daily, then as per uh, uh, whatever information is given to you in the question, you should follow that. Uh, so, I believe television has become the fulcrum. Now, we are using the cues given in the question. So you can start like this, you can sim uh, have the simple beginning through the columns that will uh, simply, you know, um, allow you to have more words in your letter. So that can also be done, there is no issue. A good language, you should maintain a good language. One more thing, don't compare your 10th and 12th because whatever it has been in 10th, just forget about that. If in these two years you haven't improved your, improved your writing, if you haven't improved your skills, then um, it is advisable, I would suggest that you should read more and more varieties uh, so that you can use good phrases and good words in your answers there in the examination. Now, this is job application. So, you are Prakash or Pratiksha. Okay, address is given. This is job application. So, in the previous one as well, I told you that one job application, 100% will be there. So, you must well prepare this so that you just copy it there in the examination. So, hint is given. You should use this hint and accordingly, you should form a resume. Because cover letter would be almost the same, just the sender's address, receiver's address and all those usual things. Uh, and the letter as I said, the newspaper's name may be different, date may be different, okay, post may be different. So these are the things where you need to be a bit alert and cautious and format is almost fixed. So this format you can follow. You can, you'll get full marks in that, name, age, apart from this heading resume, here what you have to write, personal information, right, personal information, then the next one will be what, you can talk of your academics, educational abstract or educational qualification, then you can talk of other interests, uh, simply you can use the heading interests or hobbies, if there are other distinctions, so you can have them under distinctions, then references, so these are the headings uh, to be used further, this will up to, you know, uh, this will come under this personal information, then experience, academics, other things can be, uh, these are uh, separate headings, Right. Under references, you will have to give the name of some dignitary whom you know and uh, whom uh, the person who can be contacted to inquire about you that you are whether an eligible candidate, candidate or not should be. So that is the purpose of using references, nothing else. Okay. And this alignment, you can see this alignment is to be followed. Right. So this is quite simple. Now, 
let's come to this uh, report you are mohan tiwari staff correspondent abc times now you don't have to write this name here okay you don't have to write this name abc times what we have to do is you can use the name of the place west delhi means uh, the the title will be there daylight robbery and then by mohan tiwari as the name given comma staff correspondent okay this can be used here and after this you can write the place and the date like this then you can put a colon and you can start from here or from the next line so this format is to be followed rest is okay you can change paras there is no problem use good language not the language that you used in your 8th class or 7th class or 9th class bit of you know and at least correct language grammatically logically correct with proper you know sequence of ideas proper thought flow proper coherence this is quite important so along with this if your language is good you will get 5 out of 5 so in the previous one as well i told you that report is advisable you better go for report because you don't have to think much in report in article of course um, it can be uh, it, it can be more time taking because you'll have to think properly arrange the ideas in a proper manner you may miss uh, on things even in report there are less chances of that and here the article is about the suraj kund mela is a craft festival held every year from 1st february details are given queues are given even so use them uh, cultural extravaganza suraj kund and this name in the center is given in the sample paper um, issued by the cbsc it is given in the center so you can also follow the same and remember to have at least 3 2 5 paras in your article you should divide it it shouldn't be like one a single para in the whole article better i would suggest at least have 3 to 5 paras have a very good impressive beginning and a perfect conclusion to that beginning in between it is quite simple just details are to be included so go with that and now uh one extract i have taken just one question from the extract here um uh, the purpose is to discuss this question that uh, so that you may have a proper idea that what is what has been asked not move our arms means so what should be written for this so the answer can be cease all the activities to introspect right this should be the proper answer so not move our arms you may say that not move our arms means be still be uh, silent uh, don't do anything so that is not the proper answer what actually the poet is trying to say in the in this poem so we can say cease all the activities the poet is trying to suggest what we should avoid all the rush and run we should avoid the quarrelings and fightings and we should start introspecting we should have some time to introspect that is the purpose of the poet so that purpose should be uh, should be included in your answer that okay that will be perfect and then how does the poet celebrate a tree uh, another one which i have taken so what he has uh, conveyed through this line uh, the usage of tree in the poem that um, <clears throat> such the sun the moon the trees old and young uh, sprouting a shady boon for a simple sheep so here the poet is trying to say that uh, the trees whether old or young what do they do they provide shade to all the beings without any discrimination and bias so through the trees the poet is trying to say that how nature uh, you know does it plays its role in a beautiful manner um, without you know unbiased to all the beings so that is how he celebrates the tree and we need to explain it in that way so this is actually where uh, the understanding of the chapter is checked this is where it come uh, it comes that you know the chapter properly you understand the chapter properly or not right now see this question this is quite different perhaps um, very few of you have gone through this chapter in the 11th class so what we have to do we have a trick here compare the interview uh, interweaving of fantasy and reality in adventure and the third level 
So you can do one thing that you know about the third level, you have read the chapter properly. So use all the facts and things given in the third level to justify that you know the adventure as well. So what you can do while explaining, you can use this name adventure and you can talk of just as in the third level, Charlie goes into uh, the third level, uh, which was actually the product of his fantasy and creation. Similarly, in the adventure, we find, uh, we find that the protagonist goes into the same uh, land of fantasy. Uh, so it is a blend of, uh, like the third level, it is a blend of both fantasy and reality. The protagonist lives in two worlds. So uh, this is how we need to, you know, balance our ignorance. Okay. So, with uh, in, an, in an intellectual manner. Similarly, the second one, Sadao's acceptance of the general's plan to assassinate Tom was counterproductive to having put him on the path of recovery. Now, substantiate with reasons. So, what we have to write in this answer, um, this is really a bit tricky. Um, say, if the general hadn't offered uh, Sadao that he would send the assassins to help him out in getting uh, rid of that uh, prisoner of war, then perhaps Sadao would have um, done it in a better way. He would have handed the prisoner over to the policeman and um, the matter would have, you know, come to a close in a proper manner. Means he did his duty, he would have done his duty as a doctor properly and he would have accomplished his or done his duties as a nationalist and patriot as well. But just uh, because of the promise made by General to Sadao that he would send the assassins and he, which he forgot later because of his own ill health and because of that the, the prisoner uh, recovered completely, put him, that's what actually put him on the path of recuperation and recovery. He recovered completely. Sadao went on waiting, waiting and when, waiting and finally when nothing happened, he had to uh, make another plan to get rid of him and he offered him what the board and all that. So, uh, this is how it proved counterproductive. Means instead of um, landing into the jail, the prisoner got his way out of uh, the territory, the place itself and that too quite safely without any harm, right? So this is how we need to justify uh, this question and these are the points we had to write. So I hope that you might have understood that you must follow and understand the language of the question and answer accordingly. If you don't, uh, you, you just write the common things that you know from the chapter, you don't apply your mind and reason, then you can go wrong right so uh, in long answers as well i would suggest that you uh, in sample papers some of the questions are given in long ones so better you try them as well that would definitely help in the last month at least you should have an idea that how to answer such questions okay so then all the best now no blast it out and let's uh, have something to cheer afterwards I'll come with uh, the complete discussion of the paper after your board exam just the very day um, after say after three hours two three hours of the paper I'll come with the discussion of that so uh, wait for uh, that and just prepare for your exam and as I said keep your josh high and just explore it there okay all the best mm -hmm.